The video that many of you guys have asked for is here. Today we're going to be painting up the woven watch from Kerr City. Also, I hate to admit it, but this might be my best painted miniature in the entire range. That the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind. Welcome back to the channel collectors. Recently, one of my favorite painters, Richard Gray, has released a video of how he painted the Wolfen watch. The links will be in the description below. And because it looks so awesome, I really want to recreate the effect on my very own Wolfen watch. In the process of recreating his paint job, I've learned some things and I want to share with you guys three of the main lessons I've learned after watching Richard Gray's video of how he painted the Wolfen watch. I hope these lessons can help you and hopefully you can paint like Richard Gray in the future. So for this model, Richard primarily uses a scratching technique to create very intricate textures on the miniature. This process is extremely, extremely tedious and very, very time consuming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using contrast paints to try to speed up this process. While this is not a one-to-one -one replication of Richard's process, I hope you still find this video useful and you can apply these techniques onto your open watch. So to paint the open watch, you're going to need these colors right here. All right, get these colors ready. And for the first stage, we're going to be airbrushing to recreate the red glow. I'm going to be using my usual method, but if you don't have an airbrush, fret not, I've already recorded how you can produce this result without an airbrush. So let's get airbrushing right now. So to begin, we're just going to be airbrushing. This is our standard procedure right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the entire model, which was prime black in this mix of red. So I'm currently using scale 75 intense red to solve this. If you don't have this, you can always use Liquitex Neptal red. So right here, I'm going from the top right hand corner and I'm going to be using just any other black ink. And after that, what I'm going to be using is wall colors white to paint in the highlights. Remember, just leave a little bit of black between the white and red for this effect to be really awesome. So for this stage, I'm going to be using contrast paints and making a deviation from Richard Gray's process. The contrast paint helps me create a nice and even base coat and even does the shading for me. The first thing that I've learned while observing Richard Gray's painting videos is that you shouldn't rush anything. So he really takes his time to produce every single scratch nicely and he's really really consistent with his brush control. Unfortunately for me, I have to slightly rush this stage so that I can reproduce this effect quicker than what Richard Gray has done. So for this stage, I'll be using these contrast colors and I'll be using my regular size 4 synthetic squirrel hairbrush not to leave any brush marks on the model. Also, as a quick tip, it's better to overload the model with contrast paint, then clean it up later, then have multiple applications because that might cause some tight marks. So let's get contrast painting right now. All right, it's contrast time. So right now, I'm going to be using a very, very thin down version of Contrast Black Templar from Games Workshop. I'm currently thinning it down to the ratio of three thinner to one paint and this allows me to do several layers so that I can achieve this effect. Moving on, I'm going to be using Dark Oak Flash right here straight from the bottle and because Dark Oak Flash is straight from the bottle, this is really intense and it really creates a saturated color. And lastly, I'm going to be using Space Wolf Grey and Space Wolf Grey will allow me to paint up the fabric of the open watch. Because Space Wolf Grey is so transparent, it still leaves a little bit of the red showing. And this is how I create the base color for the open watch. There have been many questions of how I paint red glow with red fabric. The answer is don't do it because it's not going to be very appealing at all. Alright, so now with the fabric done, and we're going to the last stage using Games Workshop Contrast Skeleton Horde, and this is for all the bone parts. Remember, just apply 
more than what you need and then soak up the rest later. At this point of time, while I have deviated from Richard Gray, it's time to apply some of these scratching techniques right now. So usually for me, what I do is I use the side of the brush to create layers of paint. Richard Gray uses the tip of the brush to just scratch and scratch and scratch to create really intricate designs. At the beginning, while I tried this, oh, it was a real big mess because I couldn't control the thickness of the paint as well as the amount of paint on the brush. The second lesson that I've learned is that the paint needs to be slightly thicker, just enough to flow off the brush and the brush cannot be overloaded. So what you want to do is, you want to practice a few times on your nail, get the precision and the movement ready before you go on to your model. So for this stage, you're going to need these colours right here. Get these colours ready and let's get scratching right now. Scratch, 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 scratch. So the first stage, we're going to start scratching up some copper. Right here, I'm going to be mixing up a little bit of dark old flesh with a little more colour stone grey. And as you can see, I really unloaded the brush and really just scratching up the surface. You want to do this in this very scratchy method because that's how Richard Gray has done it. And I'm really trying to emulate his style right here. Okay, so for the reflected light, what I'm currently using is Vallejo Model Color Orange Brown. And I'm also doing it in the scratchy manner. Remember, just don't overdo the reflected light because the values are not meant to outdo the main shine on the top of the shield. Okay, so now here comes the fun part. I'm also going to be using Vallejo Model Color Stone Grey in this stage. And I'm just going to be very lightly texturing the surface. So if you have watched Richard Gray's video, he really does it in the most minute methods and I do not have his fine control. I'm still trying my best right here and trying to create the textures towards the transition areas. So right here, I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Color Pale Blue Grey and I'm changing the textures very slightly. Instead of going in roughly one direction, I'm going to do this crosshatch method. So just creating this very rough burlap texture on his blue cloth on this open watch model right here. So just gradually adding in a little bit of Vallejo model color pale blue gray. I'm gonna be creating the next layer on this shield. As you can see, I wanna work the entire model together so that I can judge the values even better. So same technique, remember overload the brush first, then empty it on your nail, clean it off, then make really really fine scratches. So right here, I'm going to be adding in a little bit of a little model color, pale blue grey, and I'm just scratching up this surface right here. Very very minute scratches to create this really complex looking texture. We've got to really thank Richard Gray for sharing this video and yeah, Okay, and for the textures on the cloth, I'm going to be just refining a little bit on the surface by scratching up the leading edges and using blue model color, pale blue gray, I'm doing the exact same thing. Just building up gradual layers right here. Alright, we can move on soon. Oh boy, I'm going to be adding in a little bit of Vallejo model color off-white to the existing mix and you can already see how this makes the model pop so much more. Just picking up the rough surfaces that stand out from the light and I'm just still following that scratchy method but identifying where the glints and the shines will be on this model. So using the same color, surprisingly, because as you highlight the colors, you tend to be more desaturated. And this is the result. Because the values are very high, I'm trying to create this blue moonlight glow. And it's really showing on the model. As you can see, we moved up 
from a really warm grey scratch to a cool blue scratch and this allows the contrast to really show this is one of the other lessons I've mentioned that I learned from Richard Gray okay so just gradually very very minutely adding in a little bit more a little mono color off white and just a touch of white you really want to control the values here very very slightly Okay, so right here, I'm going to be using Games Workshop Evo Sun Scarlet mixed in with a little bit of Abaddon Black. So right here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just scratching in some of the reflected light to showcase the environment that this skeleton is standing in. Alright, this is really altering the temperature and I like what I see right now. So using just pure Evil Sun Scarlet right here. I'm just picking out the edges where the reflected light and the environmental light will be affecting this skeleton. And just, just creating this rough texture once more so that the entire model is coherent. And soon it will be time to do some weathering. Now that the scratching stage is complete, we're going to do some weathering on this model. The third thing that I've learned from Richard Gray is that he uses color temperature really well. For the cool metals such as the steel, he puts warm rust using Montfang Brown and uses a cool gray for the warmer metals such as the copper. I find that this adds so much character and I will be following this very closely. For this stage, I'm going to be using these colors right here. Get them ready. And let's get weathering the Ufen watch right now. So right here, I'm going to be using down a very, very thin down version of Games Workshop Montfang Brown. Usually, I don't use Montfang Brown, but because Richard Gray has used this color, I decided to give this a try and I really like how this looks. It really breaks up the parts and increases the part separation, which makes this model look even more detailed than what it was previously. Just putting on this wash color in areas where water would collect. And now for the verdigris, using a very thin down version of Scale 75 Sky Blue, I'm just gonna be flooding the little dings there with a little bit of this blue and I'm gonna be wiping it off with my finger. And in just a little bit, you can see the final result of this Ufen Watch skeleton. Come on, let's be real. There's no way we're going to paint every single Ufen watch like this. So watch out for our next video where we will be painting the Ufen watch in a really quick tabletop style. So I'll catch you in the final results in just a little bit. So there we have it. This is the finished result of the Ufen watch. I touch my heart and I tell you very honestly, there is no way in the world I will have enough time to get all the Ufen watch in this standard. I will be also releasing a video of how you can quickly paint up your skeletons and get them tabletop ready so that your Curse City campaign can be fully painted. Thank you guys all for watching all the way to the end. If you want to support the channel, why not give us a like and subscribe because this keeps the lights on and keeps me painting miniatures like this so that I can share with you guys my learnings. Secondly, if you really want to support the channel, head on to our Patreon, links will be in the description below and you can directly support the channel and get a whole slew of painting content which I've created over the past year or so. Lastly, tag us on Instagram so that I can give you feedback about your work and I hope to see you in the next Curse TV painting video. See you guys!